just by looking the images behind my back, you may guess it right. Today we are going to look at one additional camera. This time we are going to look at the Wi-Fi TrackMix Rowling camera. And actually there are two streams from it, but we will be talking about that in just a little bit. We'll start in a couple of seconds. It's very funny that cameras are just cameras. CCTV cameras were just CCTV cameras. Yet, in the last couple of years, there are so many developments related to the cameras that you can use inside your home, your business or wherever you want. Today we are going to look at Rowling TrackMix Wi-Fi camera, 4K dual lens PTZ camera. And what's so special about this one? Well, first of all, I don't often cover PTZ cameras. I only had a couple of them on my channel. And this one is a bit different because this one can really track you. The next thing is that this camera is dual lens camera. We've already seen dual lens cameras, for example, a Rowling dual camera, where with two lenses we are covering wider screen. But this time no, this time we have one camera that is looking at wide angle and the other camera is doing the zoom of that same specific area. And the best of all is that when you track people, vehicles or pets with that camera, the one that is providing you with the macro or zoomed in image is the one that is primary camera. So let's look at the what's inside the box, how do you mount it, configure it, etc. And yes, of course, we will be looking at how you can integrate inside Home Assistant, but not just that, we will also look at how you can configure and create some automations with it. So let's get started. As always, in the box you will get everything you need to start using the camera. First off, when you open the box, you will find the documentation, the drilling template, the stickers that you can stick on your home so that everybody knows that there is a camera watching them, plus all the other declarations, compliance documents, etc. After you remove the foam, you will see, of course, the very big camera. This one is not supposed to be hidden, so yeah, you will not miss it. You will find the Ethernet cable, power cable, plus power adapter, because this one is a Wi-Fi camera. There is also option to get the PoE camera, solar or battery power camera, and the fourth model is the LTE or 5G type of the same camera. And also mounting screws are included, five of them. The camera is pretty large, it is really heavy, but I really, really do like it. They are keeping the same design as always. And you have two plugs available. One is for the power, because yes, you need only power if you want to use it by Wi-Fi, but still you have option to use Ethernet cable if you want to have more stable connection. And this one is using both 2.4 and also 5 GHz Wi-Fi networks. So if it is in the range of 5G, it will be using 5G for better performance or better streaming of the video. Since I was doing configuration on remote site and I didn't have a laptop with me, especially not the one that can record what I'm doing plus also do something on it, I used mobile phone to configure everything. There is a one downside for that one and that is the inability to change the network settings. For changing the network settings you will need to use PC and then use either the web interface of the camera or use the app for the Rowling cameras where you can configure network and move it from DHCP to fixed IP address. I'm really not sure why this is not an option in the app itself, but it is what it is. So what you do? You take the leather, very, very long leather in my case, and if you do need large or extended leathers, I really do recommend that you have somebody near you because you want to keep the leather stable I had my issues because I was mounting the camera, recording everything on around 4, 4.5 meters from the ground, on an even surface. So what I did, I found the spot where I want to mount the camera, I took the camera, took a couple of screws and I also forgot my electric screwdriver. But in only a couple of minutes everything was mounted where I want to mount it, I did thread to the existing hole power cable, plugged the cable in the camera and more or less everything prior to the configuration of the app was done. The next step is configuring the camera inside the app. As I said, I was using a Rowling app on the mobile phone to configure everything, but you can do it via the PC too. So what you need to do, you need to open the Rowling app, click on plus sign to add new camera, select camera that's been found, and then the barcode will be presented on the screen. You just need to point that barcode 
towards the camera and when camera does catch it up, it will do QR code recognition and it will start the negotiation process to pair the camera to your existing Wi-Fi network. This is of course if you have already previously configured Wi-Fi inside the rolling app. If not, you have to either select or specify SSID, enter your password and that's it. And in less than 10 minutes overall from unboxing to mounting the camera, everything was done. The camera was added to the system. What I do always as a first thing is go to advanced settings and open up some ports. By default, on the newer cameras in the last two or three years, everything is disabled. But what I do is I enable RTSP, RTMP, ONWIF, HTTP and also HTTPS. This all will be used in one way or the other. For example, RTSP and ONWIF are used for Home Assistant but also for the Synology surveillance station. And HTTP and HTTPS are used in my case so I can access the camera via the web browser from any PC in the home. That's it. You can of course play with other settings. For example, change the camera name, change the mirror or flip for the camera if you want. You can set the preset position where you want your camera to return always. You can disable or enable person, vehicle or pet detection, change the sensitivity of that and all the other bells and whistles that other Reolink cameras also have. So, so far, nothing special. But actually, there is something special. As I said, this camera features dual lenses and the tracking capability. What that means? That means that if, for example, you enable person detection, when the person does enter the frame, the zoom lens will start tracking the person that is moving in the view. And since the camera has very wide range of movement, plus also it can tilt 90%, you can track it anywhere when it goes around your home. And this is, in my case, one of the best functionalities. If you do add SD card on the camera itself, you can of course keep all the recordings on the camera. And as with other Reolink cameras, you can also play with time lapses. But time lapse will not be using that zoom camera or zoom lens, it will be using standard wide lens for time lapses, which also makes a bit more sense. My next step was to add it to the Synology surveillance station. That location already has, I think, three cameras that have been previously added, so I decided to add the fourth camera. Again, adding it is pretty simple. In the Synology surveillance station, click on IP camera to open the IP camera settings page, click on add camera and then start the scanning process, or actually it will start automatically. In just a couple of seconds it will detect camera, but Yes, for that you already need to have ONVIP enabled, so it can detect it. Click on Next, select Server Storage where you want to keep the recordings, click on Authenticate and enter the username and password. This doesn't necessarily need to be admin account, instead you can create any additional account and give it a user privilege. Click on Authenticate, when it finishes successfully, change the name and click on Next. Select Quick, Complete or Copy Settings from other camera, I went for the Complete, Select audio video formats, stream profiles, stream 2. Unfortunately, this camera is seen in Synology as only one camera with the wide camera only, not the zoom one. And the resolution for that wide one in Synology is not as good as I was expecting. But still, the images were perfect. Play with all the other settings, customize whatever you want, and then when you're finished, just click done after you verify that everything is set up correctly. And that should be it. The camera is now added to the Synology surveillance station. Here is the night view as recorded by the surveillance station. You can play with the pan tilt zoom because this is PTZ camera. And as I said, you can move the image to the left, to the right, up and down, whatever the PTZ camera can do. Unfortunately, this stream is once again streamed from remote site. And that remote site is very far and doesn't have that good internet connection. So it may look like the camera is not responsive. Actually, this is the delay between me pressing on the button and the camera actually sending the stream back through the very, very slow internet connection. Next was, of course, adding it to Home Assistant. And once again, this was a breeze because the system does automatically recognize the camera and you only need to press Add to add it to Home Assistant. Of course, if it doesn't automatically see the camera, you can always go to Integrations, Add Integration, type in Reolink for Reolink cameras and then manually enter the IP address of the camera itself. But in my case, it auto discovered it. I just pressed add, verified or typed in username and password. This time I'm using a separate account for Home Assistant. Well, actually, always I'm using a separate account for Home Assistant. Clicked on OK and that's it. 
In Home Assistant, you have all the entities that you would need. For example, turn on off floodlight, start or stop the siren, zoom in, move it to guard position, move it down, up, left, right, etc, etc. In terms of sensors, we have information about animal, person, vehicle, or if there is any motion, and we have two streams. Lens 0 is the wide-angle lens, and then lens 1 is that zoomed lens. So if you want, you can have both of those streams inside Home Assistant, and we will be looking at automations with both of them, so stick around. Then we have a couple of entities that are not enabled. These are the streams clear stream for lens 0 and 1, snapshots of clear and fluent streams 0 and 1. Plus we have a lot of configuration options. Sensitivity, auto tracking, daylight mode, guard mode, guard return, and once again some more entities that are disabled. Let's now check out the tracking functionality. I will be giving you a couple of streams of me, cars and animals walking in and camera tracking them. For example, this recording here is something that I recorded on my mobile phone. In this case, wide angle camera has seen me first and then the one that is zoomed in started following me back. Or here, once again, it is following me in the another direction. But if you watch carefully, you will see how much it shifts, tilts and moves and tries to keep you always in the focus. And it really does an awesome job. And this is how, for example, it can look inside Home Assistant. This one is a Relic Dual Lens, this one is Wi-Fi and this one here is the standard POE camera, Color X. And these two are the stream 0 and stream 1. As you can see, I've also added a couple of icons. For example, here I can turn on and off infrared. This one is for the floodlight. And here I can see notification if there is any animal, person or vehicle detected. And as you can see, there are sometimes animals detected. This one is for the person detection and this one is for vehicle detection. You may see became unavailable here. The reason for that is that I finally decided to put the static IP address on the camera and I also restarted my router. So it lost connection two times and that's why Home Assistant hasn't seen it and the camera became available. In the whole time when I was testing the camera, I didn't have a single issue with either 2.4 GHz or 5 GHz network. The connection was really, really stable. But what can you do with the camera when you already have it inside your home assistant? Well, for example, you can create camera captures. When there is a motion the camera, vehicle, pet, or for example, person, you can save that image and send it to you via the either app, telegram, or whatever service you're using to receive notifications. And it can look something like this. These here are normal lenses and these here are zoomed lenses. This one will be triggered when there is any animal this one when there is a person, and this one is triggered on the vehicle detection. What you need to do in Home Assistant is following. I will be using temp folder to store those captures, so that's why I added this allow list external dears command and added slash tmp for the temp folder. That means that any capture I create, and for that I'm using automation inside Home Assistant, it will be stored in that folder, or in my case, temp folder, I have six images one for each normal lens and zoomed lens for animal, person and also vehicle. Next thing I did was create automations. We have six of them. Of course, you can simplify everything by using tag IDs, but I didn't do that because I want to show the difference. For example, for the normal person detection, when gate PTZ camera person changes to detected, and this is a binary sensor actually, I'm using internal home assistant command, camera take snapshot on the gate PTZ and create this file here. This file is stored in the configuration temp folder with the name of the camera and the type of the image. If you want to create the same but for the zoomed lens, the detection process is the same. I'm using the same binary sensor when it changes to detected and I'm still using the same snapshot internal home system command but instead I'm using gate PTZ fluent lens 1 and lens 1 is the zoom 1 lens to create capture of that specific image on that specific lens. Same goes, for example, for the animal, binary sensor, change it detected. Then I create a snapshot, save it in the folder that I've specified, etc, etc. You do not need to create everything. You can, for example, opt out and use only vehicle detection or person detection depending on where your camera is located. But for the purpose of this video, I created all six of them. Then there is one additional thing that you can do. If we go to settings, integrations, you can use add integration, local local file to map that file to Home Assistant. That means that the file will not just be saved on the folder inside Home Assistant, but we can actually use it as a camera inside Home Assistant. Or in my case, once again, 
six images are pulled and each image creates a separate camera stream. This one is called Gate PTZ Animal. This is wide lens. This is zoom for the zoom lens. And then I repeat the same local file for animal, person and vehicle detection. And that means that you can also display in Home Assistant when something was detected. And that also means that you can use that image and send it via the send notification service. So what are some of the cons of the camera? For me, the most disappointing thing was when I imported the camera inside Synology, the pixels or resolution of the camera was very low. It is still good, you can record it, but I was expecting more of the 4K camera. I don't know if this is the current limitation of the Synology, and by the way, on that side I have a very, very old Synology that I can also not upgrade my Synology surveillance station. So this may be issue with my system, because as I said, I'm limited to the specific version of the Synology surveillance station. Besides that, I really didn't find anything wrong with the camera. It was exceeding my expectations, not that my expectations were low, I already had pretty high expectations from the Reolink, but this one was really surprising me because the tracking functionality is working so awesome. There are still a couple of things that I want to play with, and that is for example creating a guard where the camera moves from left to right and see what happens if and when it picks up animal, vehicle or person in the frame. Will it stop the guard movement and start tracking the person or not? I'm expecting that, but this is just my expectation. But is it worth buying this camera over some other cameras? This depends on if you already have camera or not. If you, for example, have a good PTZ camera that you are really happy with, 160 euros for the camera may be a bit too steep. But if you do not have camera with such a capability already installed and used in your home, then this one is really awesome. It will definitely track anything that it sees. It sees good both in day and night. Unfortunately, during the two and a half weeks of me testing the camera, we had fog for most of the days. So there will not be that many good images that I captured and recorded on my Synology NVR. But believe me, the camera is really, really good, both during the day and during the night. And I did test also people movement during the night. And as I said, if you do not want to go with Wi-Fi, there is also PoE version or the solar version. And also don't forget, these cameras can work in local only mode. These cameras can be used with a Rowling cap to have cloud access even without opening ports. But these cameras can also be connected besides Home Assistant to Google and also Amazon smart home speakers. So you can have streams from those cameras on your smart speakers or smart displays. The links to Reolink website and also Amazon Web Store will be down in a video description. And I really do hope that you did enjoy this video and if you did enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you have any kind of a comment or a question in regard to this camera, other Reolink cameras or something else, you can always pop them down in the video comment section below and I will try to answer them. If I'm a bit late, sorry, I'm a little bit busy in the last couple of weeks or months, so it sometimes takes me a day, two or three to answer the comments, but I will definitely try to answer all of them. And before I end up the video, I really would like to say thanks to all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, shared, liked or commented on my videos. Thank you. If you too want to support the channel, you can always do that by becoming a YouTube channel member by clicking the join button down below. Or you can go to my merchandise store and get something there. Last but not least, you can always send me super thanks and I will be super thankful for that. I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.